if you can make a simple project like a blinking LED using AVR microcontrollers, you have achieved a great success in learning microcontrollers. By completing this simple project, you can ensure that you have correctly chosen, installed and operated software and equipment. Additionally, you can verify that the equipment you are using is fully functional and working properly. After that, you just need to focus on enhancing your code and design skills. In this video, I will help you in successfully completing your very first microcontroller-based project. In addition, I will show you some of tools and instruments needed to start making microcontroller-based projects. Please stay with me until the end of this video. In the previous video, we discussed the microcontroller itself and different families of microcontrollers and their similarities and their differences. We concluded that it is better to start with a microcontroller that is easy to learn and is available in deep package so that we can work with it on a breadboard without the need for PCB fabrication. AVR microcontrollers are one of microcontrollers that meet these criteria as they are easy to learn and some of their models are available in deep package and it is readily available. Overall, they are a good choice for getting started with microcontrollers. Initially, it is better to divide and categorize steps of whole process so that you can easily understand and follow every single step in setting up an AVR microcontroller and eventually you can successfully complete your very first project based on AVR microcontrollers. Each of these stages is quite general and can be discussed in detail in a separate video. However, in this video, I will explain each stage to the extent necessary to complete a simple project with AVR microcontrollers. What was the first step? Step number one, project design. The purpose of project design phase is to analyze the desired project in terms of required inputs and outputs. For example, we examine what buttons or input sensors the project requires. On the other hand, what outputs it should generate, whether it should turn on a relay or sound an alarm, Additionally, in project design phase, we investigate what specific features the project requires. For example, does it need a Bluetooth connectivity or does it need to be controlled through network? We also analyze and design the scenario for using final device. For example, we determine conditions and methods by which the end user should utilize the device. All of these activities are performed in project design phase. In this video, we are going to work on a simple project using AVR. This project involves an LED that should blink alternatively. Therefore, we have one output that needs to be connected to an LED and we don't have any inputs. Step number two, selecting suitable microcontroller family for a specific project. To select suitable microcontroller family for a specific project, experience is indeed required. To be able to choose right microcontroller family for a particular project, you should have worked on several projects using different microcontroller families. In this video, we are going to create a blinking LED. This project is super simple and selecting right microcontroller family for this project is not a big deal because this project can be implemented using any microcontroller family. However, in this video, I'm gonna use AVR to blink the LED. You may ask me why AVR? Actually, there is no good reason here. Maybe because of subject of the video, maybe. Step number three, selecting the appropriate chip from chosen microcontroller family. Each microcontroller family consists of different series and types of chips. Selecting right chip from available options within the family is a challenging task that requires consideration of various parameters. Usually the decision regarding the microcontroller family, series and chip selection is made simultaneously and at once. For example, a designer decides to use a particular chip from a specific microcontroller family in their project. 
However, this topic is not the focus of this video. I will discuss the selection of the appropriate microcontroller, family, seri, and chip in detail in a separate video. Nevertheless, it would be helpful to examine a few examples of AVR chips together. These two chips are ATmega32. This one is the package of ATmega32 and this one is SMD package of the same chip. This is ATmega64 which is available only in the package and these two chips are Atini 13. This is a D package of Atini 13 and this is SMD package of the same chip. Each of these chips has its own specific features which are described in their respective data sheets. Inside the data sheets, you can find the names of pins labeled as pin out. The pinout section indicates the name of each pin and based on their names you can guess their function. Usually each pin can have multiple different functions. For example, pin uh, 15 on this 80 mega 32 SM uh, deep package can be used either as a general purpose input output or as a user protocol output. Similarly, pin 16 on the 80 mega 32 deep package can be a digital input output or an external interrupt input. One of the crucial tasks during microcontroller configuration is precisely determining the function of each pin. The majority of microcontroller configuration is done through software and within uh, the code. In the future, I will publish videos on correctly configuring microcontrollers. In this video, I will be using the 80 Mega 32 microcontroller to build a blinking LED project. If you were to ask me why I choose this particular microcontroller for this project, I don't have a truly convincing answer. My response is, this project can be done with almost any microcontroller. Since 80 Mega 32 is a widely used and popular AVR microcontroller and familiarity with that can be more beneficial than others, I choose it. Step number four, choosing a suitable programmer and connecting it to the microcontroller. It is clear that each family of microcontrollers requires a specific programmers to be used. For example, you can't use a programmer designed for the STM32 family with ABR microcontrollers. There are various programmers available for ABR microcontrollers. All of these are AVR programmers and all of them are able to flash various AVR chips. If you look closely to each of them, you can find ISP port on them. For example, ISP port on this programmer is here. This is ISP port on this one. And these are ISP ports on these programmers. If you look at its pin names, you can find MOSI, RSDST, MISO, ground, VCC here and also here you can find same pins MOSI, RSDS, TCOM, MISO but this TNM programmer is a little bit different if you look at its back you can find the port which supports ISP and JTAG at the same time look here this programmer supports ISP and JTAG but these ordinary programmers support only uh, ISP protocol some of these programmers have zip socket like this one, this is zip socket, and this one, and this one, which makes flashing so easy. You just need to put the IC on the zip socket and use its software to flash the IC. One of the most popular AVR programmers is USB-ASP, I mean this guy, or this one. 
or many others USB ASP programmers are available in several forms in this video I'm gonna use this one USB ASP S51 as programmer based on my experience I can assure you that this programmer will suffice for 99% of your AVR based projects also it is very compact cost effective and readily available in the market this is a USB ASP S51 programmer that connects to the USB port on a computer and on the other end connects to the microcontroller it uses the ISP method where the MOSI MISO SCK and reset pins on the programmer are connected to their corresponding pins on the microcontroller these pins are available on the programmer and if you look closely you will find the same pins on the microcontroller for example for this Atini 13, they are here SCK, MISO, MOSI, RESET, and ground pins. For this 80 Mega 32 SMD package, they are here MOSI, MISO, SCK, RESET, and ground pins. For 80 Mega 32 DIP package, they are here MOSI, MISO, SCK, RESET, ground. And for 80 Mega 64, they are here MOSI, MISO, SCK, reset and ground pins some abr microcontrollers also support programming through the jtag interface for example the 80 mega 64 has the tdi tdo tms and tck pins for jtag programming if you have a programmer with a jtag interface you can connect it to these pins This is the method of connecting the programmer to the microcontroller. Don't forget to connect ground to zero volt and VCC to operating voltage of the IC. No matter the microcontroller is in SMD or DIP package, if you set up this diagram correctly, the microcontroller will be programmable. For example, 80 mega 32 IC is available in both DIP and SMD packages. In both cases, there are pins with names such as MISO, MOSI, SCK, and RESET. If you make these connections correctly, it will work. However, for SMD packages, you would need to design and create a PCB to connect the programmer pins to their corresponding pins on the microcontroller using these cables. You have to put a header box like this on the PCB and connect the programmer to this header box and eventually to the microcontroller using these cables. That's why I suggest starting with microcontrollers in DIP packages, so that you don't need to fabricate a PCB in the beginning. Here you may ask, these pins on a microcontroller, I mean MOSI, MISO and SCK, are not dedicated pins and have other functionalities. For example, these pins on 80 mega 32 are general purpose input and output in the same time. Can be used these pins to program the chip and for I.O. in the same project, the answer is yes. If you have a programmer with a zip socket, it's easy. Just put the IC on zip socket, flash the IC and use the IC as you desire. But if you don't have a programmer with zip socket, don't worry. I will tell you how to do it. Look here at this diagram. The programmer pins are active only when flashing process is in progress. After flashing the chip, these pins become inactive. I mean, MISO, MOSI, SCK and RESET pins on programmer become high impedance and these pins I mean MOSI, MISO and SCK on microcontroller can be used for other purposes. For example, you can connect buttons, LEDs, uh, uh, relays, transistors, modules and other external components to these pins. But you can't connect your other external components directly to these pins. If you do, these components may work fine, but it may cause the programmer fail to recognize the chip and flash the chip. There is a rule you have to follow to prevent a conflict between programmer pins and your I.O. on MISO, MOSI and SCK. This golden rule is to use resistors. By using resistors, signals on these I.O. pins can't affect the programmer signals.
Now is the time for the next step. Step number five, selecting suitable compiler for your microcontroller family. For each microcontroller family, there are different compilers available with varying features. For example, for STM32, you can use STM32 Cube IDE or KLU Vision among others. For AVR, you can use CodeVision AVR, Microchip Studio, and so on. Each compiler has its own unique features. For example, CodeVision AVR simplifies working with microcontrollers due to its CodeWizard tool and built-in libraries. However, this software is not free and purchasing a standard license for this software costs around 200 euros. In this video, I'm going to use Microchip Studio, which is both free and has a lot of free libraries available online. You can find the download link for Microchip Studio and CodeVision AVR in the description of this video. The workspace in Microchip Studio software looks like this. To begin, you need to define a project within the software. To do this, click on the project option under the new submenu in file menu. Here, select the CC++ option and click on GCC executable project. Additionally, you can specify the project save pass and name here and click OK. On this page, you need to select your desired microcontroller. You can easily search for it by typing its name in this box. Well, here we have 80Mega32A, which we should select and click OK. That's it. The project has been created and now we can move on to the next step. Please note that the latest version of Microchip Studio is only compatible with Windows 10 and above. If you are using an older operating system such as Windows 7, the software may not install on your system. If the software don't install on your system, you will need to search for and install an older version of the software. Older versions were released under the name Atmel Studio. Step number 6. Circuit Design and Assembly in this stage, in addition to knowledge of microcontrollers, you also need basic knowledge of electronics. For example, in this project, we intend to turn an LED on and off. To do this, you need to know that LEDs have positive and negative polarity and should be connected correctly in the circuit. Additionally, you need to understand that to safely light up an LED, you should connect a resistor in series with it before applying voltage. Otherwise, it may burn out the LED or damage the microcontroller. Moreover, you need to consider the appropriate resistor value to ensure that the brightness of LED is as you expected. The example of an LED may seem simple. Just imagine that instead of an LED, you need to turn on and off a DC motor or perform a more complex task. In such cases, selection of external components and circuit requirement become a bit more complex. In this video, I am going to have a blinking LED. You may wonder which pin to connect this LED to. Microcontrollers have a lot of pins, so answer to this question is simple. You can connect this LED to any general purpose pin. When we write the program code, we can send the on and off signal to any of the general purpose pin we choose. Now, with these statements, you might have another question in mind. You may ask which pin is the general purpose pin? Good question. If you look at any AVR microcontroller pinout, you will see some of pins have specific names like VCC, Ground, Xtal, Reset, AREF, and so on, while others are designated with names like PA, 
like this, PB like this, and PD, PC, and so on. These pins usually have multiple uses and are called general purpose pins. We have full control over their functionality by writing codes. In this project, I will connect the positive lead of the LED to PB0 and connect the negative pin of the LED to ground through a 1K ohm resistor. And in addition, I will connect MOSI, MISO, SC card reset and ground pins to the programmer and also power up the chip by connecting VCC and ground to power supply. Now that we have connected the LED and the programmer to the microcontroller, we can move on to the next step. Step number seven, writing and debugging the program code for the microcontroller. In this step, you need to write appropriate code inside the compiler and if there are any errors, debug the code to achieve the desired outcome. This step also requires programming skills which cannot be fully covered in a video. In my opinion, this step and the previous step which involves circuit connection and code writing are the most crucial stages in carrying out a microcontroller based project where many individuals often face challenges. The codes you see here are automatically generated by Microchip Studio and now we need to make the necessary changes in them. This step consists of two stages, first configuring the microcontroller and second writing main codes. Configuring the microcontroller is done usually by using some codes before main while loop, somewhere here. This project is very simple and it only requires us to define pin PB0 as a digital output. To do this, we have to write this line of code. And to control the on-off state of PB0 pin in the microcontroller, I have to write these lines of code. And finally, I have to include this library and use these functions here. I understand that you may have many questions about the codes we wrote and that is completely natural because programming can initially seem a bit complex and difficult to learn. Thank God the next steps are so easy. Step number 8, generating a hex output file. This step is very simple and you just need to know which menu in the compiler to use to issue this command. If your codes have no errors, they will easily compile and the hex file will be generated. Please let me first open the project storage location. Here it is on my PC, my document, Atwell Studio 7, GCC application number 1, GCC application number 1. This is the name of project we already assigned to this project. Inside the project folder, there is another folder named debug, which is currently empty, but as soon as you compile the project, several files will be created inside it, and we will need one of those files. To generate the output, click on the build solution option under the build menu. You can see that the project compiled successfully and the output files were created. Look here. Yes. Inside the debug folder, there are several files now. If your codes had any errors, the project wouldn't compile and the list and number of errors would be visible here. You see there is no error. Let me take another look at the created files. 
Here there is a file with extension HEX which is the main program output and we are going to transfer it to the microcontroller using the programmer. Transferring a hex file from computer memory to microcontroller memory is also a straightforward task. Let's do it. Step number 9. Using a programmer device to transfer the hex file to the microcontroller. For this task, you need a specific programmer software that you should obtain from the vendor along with the programmer device. If you are using USB ASB, you can use free software such as Extreme Burner or Prog ISP. In this video, I'm gonna use Prog ISP. To use the programmer, we need to open the Prog ISP software here. First of everything, we have to select the desired chip here. I'm going to select ATmega32A and after that, by clicking on this button, we can load the desired hex file. And with simple press of the auto button, we can transfer the file to the microcontroller's memory. If everything is set up correctly, pressing this button will easily program the IC. Let me test it. Pay attention here. When everything is OK, a progress bar will appear here and then disappear here. Also, if you look at the programmer device itself, you will see the LEDs on the programmer device turning on and off, and ultimately the circuit will start working. You can see that our blinking LED is functioning correctly, which means our task is done and complete. Here you saw that the transfer of the hex file to the microcontroller proceed without any problem. But when you do it, you may encounter errors, for example, this error or this one, which are quite common. The reason for these errors is not something fixed or specific, and there may be various reasons. I'm going to disconnect one of the wires between the microcontroller and the programmer and see if the programmer can transfer the file to the microcontroller or not. Let me disconnect the reset wire and test it. Let me test another wire. I'm going to disconnect mousey wire. You can see that it resulted in an error. If you disconnect any of MOSI, MISO, SCCA or RESET wires or hook them up to a wrong place, the programmer will fail to flash the chip. For now, let's assume that you are one of the fortunate individuals who haven't encountered any error. If you do encounter any, simply wait for a video on this channel where I will provide a detailed explanation about causes and solutions of those errors. Step number 10. Testing the project. In this step, we need to examine the circuit and determine if it functions as intended. If it performs as desired, that's excellent and our work is complete. However, if there are any errors or it doesn't function properly in any way, we need to go back to step 6 and repeat the process from step 6 onwards until we ultimately achieve the desired functionality from project after testing. Well, in this project, our goal was to learn about AVR microcontrollers and for testing purposes, we built a blinking LED which worked well. However, our knowledge of AVR microcontrollers is not yet complete because we haven't delved into topics such as fuse bits, timers, interrupts, crystal configuration, peripherals, and many other aspects, but reaching this point is a significant achievement that is highly valuable. If you have successfully completed this project and the LED is blinking for you as well, you can be confident that you have correctly chosen, installed, and used the compiler, programmer, and programmer software, and all the equipment, software, and components you are using are healthy. Now all you need to do is to focus on improving your skills because you did a hello world project with AVR. So guys, thank you for watching me. 
Thank you for being with me until the end of this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as well. Thank you again. See you next time.